So going back for day two, we did 9.5 miles. And this was pretty much just for the food. When we went down to Disney, they were having the food and wine festival. And I kind of made fun of uh, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law taking pictures of all the food that they were eating for the food and wine festival. But it's going to kind of come in handy now because I can use their photos to interject here so that you can watch some of the food that we were eating while I talk about it. So sorry I made fun of you guys if you watch this. Uh, so if, if you see something, because I'm just going to kind of roll as I, I see the, uh, I'm just going to roll them in in no particular order really. And some of them are things that they ate that my wife and I didn't try. So if you have a question as to what something is or how it was, uh, just let me know. Uh, Timestamps are always helpful, you know, comment section. Uh, I'll let you know right now, the majority of the food that we ate was really, really good. Uh, the lamb, I'll try and put that here, uh, was Good according to my wife and sister-in-law, but my mother-in-law said it tasted more lamby than she thought it would. I have no idea what lamb tastes like. I did not actually eat the lamb. I was off doing something else. I'm not sure where I was, but there are a few things that I didn't get to try. But the majority of the food was great. They also have drinks and both non-alcoholic and alcoholic drinks. And by the end of it, you will be full or or bursting at the seams because all of the food that we ate we pretty much shared amongst the four of us everybody got a little bite and then we just kind of moved on to the next thing and i mean there were some things that some of you know some people ate as opposed to other people uh myself and my wife ate the canadian cheddar bacon soup which was really really good and uh the empanada from I'm drawing a blank as to where it was from, but we, we had that while they didn't. They had the beef skewers, which I really was upset that I didn't get to try because they were really, really good uh, according to everybody else who ate them. So the food part is in the back with all the different lands. So in the lands, this is where you get each of these individual food items in, in like really small containers, as you've seen, uh, kind of sampling the foods from these different areas. However, the food, the food is not the, the only thing that these areas have to offer. Each one is a, I want to say like a cultural ambassador to the particular land. The architecture is exactly as it would be in the particular region of origin, as well as the, the staff or cast members there are all from that local region. Now, because we were... I won't say speeding through areas, but we were definitely like on the food trail. We didn't spend a lot of time at each of the individual lands. I think the ones that we spent the most time at were China, because my wife was looking for a bag, and Japan, because it was one of the larger, you know, areas, larger lands. I mean, just, just, in Japan alone, there was, you know, the giant tower, there was one of those archways, as well as like a really nice looking koi pond. And then you kind of actually go into the store and that store was broken up into like several different areas. You kind of had more of the alcohol related section then like, which also kind of had food from that area, as well as like a kind of I want to say tchotchke shop, but like a, a definitely souvenir gift based area. And then uh, at least with Japan, something kind of dedicated to cartoons and, and video games. So, I mean, it, it was really good. We, we spent quite a bit of time there, uh, tried some sake. It's pretty good. It was good. Uh, we also got uh, some drinks, non-alcoholic drinks there because I kind of like trying different types of sodas and stuff like that. It was kind of a, I won't say it was a weird drink, but it had like the, the marble in it. I've seen it before and I always wanted to try one. So this was my chance to try one without having to fly 20 plus hours to get to Japan.
So there are some items that are part of the food and wine festival that you can get from a shop that are actually cheaper than what you would get from the food and wine festival. There were a couple items like a steamed bun uh, in China and creme brulee from France, where you could get a larger portion cheaper if you just went to, I forget what it was called, but there was a, a pastry shop. I'm, I'm not even gonna to attempt to, well, I'm having difficulties remembering what it was called, but I'm not going to butcher the name of what I think it is because if you do speak French fluently or at least better than I can attempt to, you will, you will hate me. So I won't do that, but there is a pastry shop. You should go there. There are items there that you can get that are part of the food and wine festival. And then there are some things that are not part of the food and wine festival, which were just delicious, um, like baguettes and chocolate mousse, which was just ridiculous. Uh, so these items you, you, uh, what, well, you know, some of these items you would not get unless you went to the restaurant or store of a particular land. And this is, this is kind of the funny part is after eating for just about the entire day and we're ready to call it a day, we're kind of at the front of the park. My wife and I decided to go all the way to the back of the park again to pick up some fresh baguettes to bring back to our hotel room to eat for dinner and just like pass out. Uh, however, it was at this time as we were going back to, uh, to France uh, that we kind of came across the, uh, the, the fountain. Yeah, there's lots of little water structures and things like that at Epcot, which are really fun to watch. But we came across uh, one of the fountains and I guess it was doing like a, a show and it was in the evening and they had, you know, not only the water jumping around, but music and lights and it was kind of cool. So that's what it looked like. So the last thing that I remember and have on my cheat sheet for Epcot, which I skipped because we did this probably midway through day two. And it's, it's good because it's not very shaded at Epcot. So you kind of need this little break in between. And it was the American Adventure. It's a 30 minute show inside air conditioned with very nice cushioned seats. So it's also about halfway through the World Showcase in the back. So if you're looking for a little respite in between, this is a good show to watch. Um, there are some, I don't know if they'll fix it, but like people that they count at the end, like the grand finale, where I'm very certain Einstein was not an American, but he's in there. I could be wrong. Let me know if I'm wrong. But uh, it, it was a point of great debate between my wife and myself so but it's a good show there's animatronics there's it almost feels like you're watching a, a theater production but it's not a theater production so it was cool you should watch it 
it's it's going to give you that little break in the middle of the day which you probably will need after all of the walking around you're going to be doing and if you're doing the food and wine festival you're going to be doing a lot of eating so this is a good way to take a break in between uh, the park i will say takes on a different life at night so if you can stay there and if they have extra magic hours or something stay there late at night because one uh, the epcot ball looks awesome at night and to the buildings and the different architecture take on a, a different feeling at night. And it, it's difficult to describe, but as with most things that I've said, if you've watched any of the other videos, just it, it's something to experience. And being that it was my first time there, I was trying to experience as much as humanly possible. And that is one thing that I found. Going on something in the daytime and at night gave it a whole different feel or different look. So, um, not sure if I'm going to have to cut this into two, but that was Epcot. Uh, we spent two days there. And yeah, I would probably say Magic Kingdom's my favorite park for the rides and Epcot because I'm a, a, I'm a technology and culture guy. That's why I like this park. Two separate reasons. I mean, it's got good rides, but Magic Kingdom definitely has the rides hands down. So this is, this is a good place for uh, culture and tech. And if you happen to know a little bit about the culture of some of these places that you're going, it's, I don't want to say surprising, but I do know a little bit about uh, Japanese culture because of uh, where I work. And uh, we bought souvenirs for my, some of my friends at uh, the Japanese land. And just some of the little, little subtle nuances that not everybody knows about kind of surprise the uh the cashier which was, was which was nice and they're also a wealth of information uh, if you're trying to decide between in our case we were trying to find uh, a sake that he hadn't had before because he was stationed over in japan for a while and we got two very good recommendations from uh from the cashier and i'm very sorry to say that i do not recall her name apologies but again uh, that was Epcot. Hopefully, uh, this is long and rambly, I know, but you might have found it interesting in some way, shape, or form. If you know of any other hidden Mickeys at Epcot that I am obviously missed or just want to share with me or other people, let me know in the comments below. Uh, thanks for watching, and hopefully you found this helpful.